All right, everyone. We've all been there before where somewhere along the lines in our efforts to lose weight, we've broken out into an all-out binge eating fest. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about just going to Dairy Queen to get a blizzard or something. I am talking about a binge session that is an all-out buffet where you actually feel like you can't control yourself at all. Where even though you've already eaten a lot of food, you just keep going and going because it's like you can't stop yourself. And as it happens, I'm recording this video on a Tuesday where I just had myself a little session like this over the weekend. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how I completely offset that binge session and still come out leaner with absolute confidence to the point where I don't even feel bad about myself at all. If this is your first time here, my name is Ben Richardson. I'm a personal trainer, a certified nutrition coach, and a chemical engineer. For years, I spent my life in a horrible state of health from being overweight, having tons of junk food cravings, really low libido, low energy levels. I slept like crap. And it wasn't until I was in college and I went through a really nasty breakup where I really started to get a grip on my life. So I'm here to share everything that I have learned since then, which was over five and a half years ago. So if you're interested in content like this, go ahead and subscribe. So before I dive into tactics, I want to help you a little with a mindset aspect of binge eating and cheating on your diet, because you got to understand that it's normal and everybody does it. Not only is it normal, but overfeeding like this isn't even necessarily a bad thing. The only bad thing about overfeeding is the guilt and disappointment that comes with it. You know, you feel like you failed at your diet, but you can easily overcome this feeling by following a couple of rules. Now, quick disclaimer before I go on, I'm not talking about an eating disorder here. There comes a point where you really should speak with a specialist like a dietitian about this, and I am not a dietitian. I am a nutrition coach. I can't diagnose anyone with a medical condition and treat them if that's what's going on. But binge eating on a weekend and overeating for a few days is very very common, and it doesn't mean that you have an eating disorder. It's very normal, and it's part of the weight loss process. Everybody goes through it, and that's what I'm talking about here. All right, so I want to go over a few rules of overeating. So rule number one is to understand that short periods of overeating over the course of one or two days actually has a lot of benefits. So after a period of overeating, your body upregulates fat burning hormones. Then once you switch back to dieting, aka under eating, your body will be more primed to burn fat very efficiently. And furthermore, if you've been dieting for like four to six days and then you switch to eating more calories, you create an anabolic rebound. So during calorie restriction, your body upregulates all kinds of anabolic hormones and receptors. And when you switch to higher calories, you can temporarily partition a lot of those nutrients to capitalize on this upregulation in hormones and receptors. Short periods of overeating also keeps your metabolism running very well while you're trying to lean down. It is going to mitigate any metabolic damage from restricting calories. And metabolic damage is inevitable when you're trying to lose weight because your body has to undergo some stress to get rid of body fat. That. That's why it's important to lift weights and do strength training while you're eating in a calorie deficit because that's going to ensure that all of the weight that you lose is body fat and not muscle mass. But yeah, overeating is going to support your metabolic health while you're trying to lose weight. You don't want to crash diet and destroy your metabolism just to lose weight. So because of this, I actually recommend that you strategically use overeating days to reach your weight loss goals and also also to just keep yourself sane while you're dieting. And this kind of brings me to rule number two. If you decide to use these overeating days in your dieting program, I strongly recommend that you actually plan them. So when you plan them, this is going to strip away pretty much all the feelings of guilt when you fall off the wagon of your diet. I mean, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I overate all weekend and I still came out leaner and felt zero guilt about all the food that I ate. 
And that's because I had a plan going into it. If you know that, let's say, Thursday evening and all day on Friday, you can eat whatever you want, then you really have no reason at all to feel guilty about it. Guilt is what fuels nonstop eating past the point of satisfaction. Now, in a bit here, I'm going to teach you how to completely offset the overeating, even if you did go a little crazy and you strayed from your plan a little bit. But if you just go into it with the mindset that you're just going to enjoy Enjoy yourself and not feel bad about it, you're going to walk away from it with a much healthier relationship with food. Because eating is fun and it's enjoyable and you shouldn't have to deprive yourself completely just to build a great looking body and crush your fitness and nutrition goals. All right, and then rule number three to overeating, don't call them cheat days or screwing up on your diet. I hate terms like that because they have such a negative stigma attached to them. I like to think of these days as refeed days or high calorie days. This kind of shifts how you view it into a more positive light and it allows you to feel a lot less guilty about it as you just enjoy your food. But if you do go crazy on a weekend and quote unquote mess up on your diet, there are a few things that you can do to offset a little weekend of binge completely. But keep these rules in mind as I talk about what you can do to undo all this damage. So because I'm a chemical engineer, I kind of can't help but bring some engineering concepts into my fitness and nutrition philosophies. And really the best engineering control to prevent or limit risk is to eliminate the risk altogether. So if you know how to eliminate the guilt and the shame associated with overeating and screwing up on your diet, then you're going to walk away from it with a much healthier attitude towards eating. So taking preventative measures, that is going to be a good route to go to mitigate the effects of weekend binging. But anyway, let's talk about what you actually want to hear now. Here's what you can actually do to offset a whole weekend of overeating and screwing up on your diet. Now you kind of have three options options here. So option one is to just go back on your diet, which is going to take several days just to make up for all the extra calories that you ate over the weekend. And it's going to result in preventing weight gain instead of producing actual weight loss. Not a great option, but it is an option. And then option number two, you could just stop dieting altogether. You could give up completely because you're so discouraged and just say goodbye to building an incredible body forever. Now, I really hope you don't choose this option, but it is a lingering option and probably a pretty tempting one after a whole weekend of screwing up on your diet because, I mean, at least you enjoyed yourself while you were stuffing your face full of food. So I understand the temptation, but then there's option three, you could offset all the fat gain in one day and strategically allocate the calories over the course of a few days. And when you do this, you will actually come out of this weekend binge much leaner instead of just preventing weight gain. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to choose option three every single time. Option three sounds awesome. And it's not even that hard either, because here's the thing. After a couple days of overeating, you're not going to be that hungry for at least a day or two. I mean, chances are if you are hungry, then that hunger is just false hunger because you scientifically fueled your body with a lot of energy or calories. So your body isn't actually telling you that it needs to eat more food. The overeating just gave you a little bit of a taste of sweetness and now you just want more of it. So to stop that, you can use one of the oldest tricks in the book book and that is fasting. So I recommend that you engage in some kind of 20 to 24 hour fast following your weekend of overeating. So if you just fast for a while, you can rid yourself of the desire to just eat out of pleasure or boredom. You'll get back in touch with your body and as a result, you'll be able to diet much more effectively for the following days. I've actually found it very difficult to get back on track on my diet after following a high calorie weekend before I started using fasting. That's why I don't like option one, which is to just get back on your diet. No, compensate for the food you ate over the weekend. Don't just go back to the diet that you were doing before. Choose the route to offset all the damage. In fact, really the only time I use longer 20 to 24 hour fasts is after high calorie days to get back in touch with my body. I don't often fast for anything longer than 16 hours, but fasting allows you to create a pretty big calorie deficit. So when you combine this with a few other tricks, you really can offset any 
fat gain from your little weekend of glory. You also want to revive your metabolism and get those fat burning pathways firing on all cylinders. So you can do this by using a high intensity interval training workout in the morning and ideally hitting a hard weightlifting session sometime in the afternoon or maybe the early evening. If you can't do two workouts in one day, then I'd at least opt for a longer one and a half hour workout where you lift weights for maybe 45 minutes to an hour and then do some kind of high intensity interval training for 20 or 30 minutes after that. I prefer the morning workout though because it'll ramp up your metabolism throughout the day. You can turn almost any form of cardio into a high intensity interval training session. If you follow the general structure of doing the cardio at a high intensity for one minute and then doing it for a lower intensity for one to two minutes. So a great example of this is sprints. When you sprint, you run hard and then you just walk for a bit and you repeat that cycle for like 20 minutes and then that's a good high intensity interval session. You can also use the elliptical, just turn up the resistance for a solid minute and then turn it down for one or two minutes, repeat that cycle for 20 minutes. Another great option is jump roping. Same idea, you jump rope hard for one minute and then you just rest or walk around for one or two minutes and you'll do that for 20 minutes. You get, I think you get the picture here. Now you might not feel like sprinting or jump roping with all that food that you ate over the weekend sitting in your stomach, but just gauge it by how you feel. I mean, I've woken up some Monday mornings feeling gross and bloated and I don't wanna go jumping around the place or sprinting hard. So I'll just use the elliptical or crush a high intensity interval training session on the stationary bike or something. So I'd recommend waking up early Monday morning and hitting a hard high intensity interval training session before you go to work. And then for your second workout, you're gonna do a solid 45 minutes to an hour of strength training. Since you're still fasted, because remember, you're shooting for a 20 to 24 hour fast, your growth hormone levels are actually going to be through the roof and your free fatty acids are going to be spilling into your bloodstream to be used as fuel. And your body is absolutely primed to shred fat right now because of that high intensity interval training session that you hit from the morning. So after your second workout, you wanna go ahead and break your fast. So for dinner, you wanna keep your calories between 600 to 1000 while getting as much protein as possible. So the best way to do this is to have like 8 to 12 ounces of some kind of lean protein like chicken breast or sirloin steak, canned tuna in water with a little bit of mayonnaise. You can have some low-fat cottage cheese, eggs with egg whites, some wild-caught salmon, fat-free, vanilla Greek yogurt, all those are great options. You can also have a few cups of broccoli or spinach and a solid pound of potatoes. Baked potatoes or sweet potatoes are fine. Just don't drench the potatoes in butter or oil and you should be okay. This dinner is going to fill you up nicely without being crazy high in calories. And another fantastic option is to do a protein-rich smoothie. One reason I really like this is that this is going to be really easy on your digestive system. And that's really nice if you're feeling bloated from all that overeating over the weekend. So just use a couple servings of plain fat-free Greek yogurt and you can add a scoop of powdered protein. I prefer collagen peptides, but whey protein's fine too. And then just add in some of your favorite fruits to give it some sweetness. You can easily make a super filling protein smoothie for less than a thousand calories, and you'll be absolutely stuffed from all the nutrients that are in it. So to wrap everything up, Here's how your offset day is going to look. Early in the morning, you wanna hit your high intensity interval training session. Pick some kind of form of cardio and do one minute of high intense cardio followed by one or two minutes of lower intense cardio. Then just repeat that cycle for 20 or 30 minutes to get your session in. Then you can hit your strength training session, maybe during your lunch break, since you're shooting for a 20 to 24 hour fast, or you can go work out after work early in the evening, and that's gonna be about 45 minutes to an hour. And then after that, you're gonna break your fast with a high protein, low calorie dinner. I gave you some good options for this meal, so I'd encourage you to just stick with one of those. But there you have it, guys. That's how you offset an entire weekend of overeating in just one day. Now, maybe this sounds a little extreme or maybe even unhealthy, but it's just one day. 
I mean, yeah, you are going pretty hard to offset all this overeating in just one day, but your body is going to be well fueled to be able to do this. It is not unhealthy to eat more on some days and then eat less on others. And it's certainly not unhealthy to fast and abstain from eating for long periods of time. People have been doing it for thousands of years. And there are even a ton of health benefits associated with fasting. So give this offset day a try next time that you come out of a weekend feeling like you screwed up on your diet and you went overboard. After doing this offset day, you'll feel leaner and super motivated to get back on track and crush your diet for the rest of the week. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you've made it this far, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I post content like this every single week talking about fitness and nutrition tips that I've learned over the past five plus years I've been eating and training to lose weight, build muscle, get stronger, and build a healthy body. So go ahead and subscribe and turn the notification bells on too so that you don't miss out on any of my latest videos. If you made it to the end, I do appreciate the support and I hope you got a ton out of this video too and you feel well equipped to combat any negativity you experience from screwing up on your diet over the weekend. Good luck in all of your fat loss endeavors. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.